It is Palestinians who live in Gaza, but Israel controls almost everything and everyone who goes in and out. The Rafah Gate is the only lifeline now. It's at the southernmost end of Gaza and borders Egypt's Sinai Peninsula, a desert. The only other way out is the Erez crossing in the north, controlled by Israel, and Kerem Shalom in the south, though it's used solely for commercial goods. Both are shut. Rafah is where most Palestinians try to get permission to exit, but Egypt tightly controls it, and approval is difficult. Most people born in Gaza have never left. A Canadian-born artillery officer is helping plan Israel's ground offensive into Gaza. Crystal Gamansing is in Jerusalem and has been speaking with her. Crystal. Donna Maya told me that she rushed back to Israel. She was on vacation in Canada when that deadly incursion by Hamas took place on October 7th. Right now, she describes her work as very intense as she's helping to craft Israel's ground offensive work that puts the lives of soldiers and civilians in her hands. A buildup of troops and tanks can be seen outside Gaza as Israel readies itself for a military operation officials claim will eliminate Hamas. We are focused on one goal, to get forces and go forward to victory. For this purpose, we will need determination, says Benjamin Netanyahu. Addressing the Knesset, the Israeli Prime Minister told parliamentarians victory will take time. Around Israel, military hardware is on the move. Several days have passed since the nation warned the world it would be launching coordinated attacks, including a significant ground operation. There's a lot of people that they haven't seen in a while. An operation this Israeli reservist, originally from Toronto, will be helping to design. Global News has agreed to only use Maya's first name and not show her face because of the nature of her work. We plan all of the military targets. Um, this is a huge role, as you can imagine, especially dealing with all of the international onlookers and, and, and explaining and also doing everything according to Israeli law as well as international law. Maya was sitting in a synagogue in Vancouver with her husband when the rabbi started to explain that Hamas fighters stormed into Israel, terrorizing communities, taking hostages, and eventually killing more than 1,300 people. Nauseous, sick to my stomach, couldn't even imagine the horrors that, that people had gone through and that people were still going through. She says she's angry to see how some people are reacting to what she views as Israel defending itself. The U.N. says many women and children have been killed in airstrikes. Maya says Israel takes precautions to warn citizens and minimize the loss of civilian lives. We don't want to kill people, especially not people who are not involved in the situation. We are simply protecting ourselves. But Hamas has also been planning and is likely ready for an all-out assault by Israel, says this security expert. They have been ruling, Hamas, uh, ruling Gaza. And it's a town. They have a town underground um, that they are in control of, not the Israeli army. And undoubtedly, they're setting traps for the Israeli soldiers. Security experts and military strategists anticipate a long and bloody war. We did hear the prime minister say that determination and time will be needed for victory. But Maya is confident they will succeed in their objectives and ensure Israel's security. Donna? Crystal Gamansing in Jerusalem. Thanks, Crystal.